nyakwaha president wa republika umwe mu barinzi w'igihango Mr. Carl Wilkins yifuzaga kubagezaho ijambo mu mwemereye mwasubira mu byicaro byanyu hanyuma akabagezaho ijambo Mr. Carl Wilkins Your Excellency, the President of the Republic of Rwanda, Paul Kagame. Your Excellency, First Lady of the Republic, Janet Kagame. Honorable Prime Minister, President of the Senate. Honorable Ministers, Chairman of the Unity and Reconciliation Commission. Leaders of the Government of Rwanda. Family of Rwanda, Friends of Rwanda. I didn't see this day coming. Never imagined an opportunity to have the, the leadership of Rwanda's attention. I figured I should take advantage of this. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Thank you for the kind invitation today. Thank you for the generous honor. I'm wondering if this means Indi Umunya Rwanda? As I listened to the report and my good friend Serge was translating for me of the conversations you had this afternoon, I was struck as I was preparing some some stories and some remarks, the parallels. And as you were speaking about strategies, and as you were speaking about um, both global and community strategies, I thought maybe the best way I could say thank you today for this honor would be to share a little bit of my personal strategies in unity and reconciliation. For some, it seems like a lofty idea unrealistic, and perhaps in the face of genocide, some would think it's impossible. But for those who survived, unity and reconciliation is the breath of life that restores the heart and the intellect. And we can't imagine moving forward any other way. But I understand those who struggle with this because I too have struggled. I don't compare myself with those who survived, but we all lost something in 1994. And how do we restore? How do we restore our humanity? How do we live wholehearted lives? I have found a strategy that <clears throat> has, has affected every part of my life. It has affected every relationship in my wife, in my life. Did you hear that? In my wife? <laughs> That's because I'm not all here. She should be standing next to me today. What, what we did during that time is not something I did. It's not even something that Teresa and I did. Everything that we did during those days that was good and that was true, we did it together. My Rwandan colleagues who worked with me, and I really would like you to just use your imagination for a moment and imagine the most beautiful woman in the world standing next to me, and you can appreciate how honored we both are for this honor today. But this strategy, yes, thank you. 
this strategy that has impacted every every area of my life, every relationship, from my from my generous-hearted wife to the stranger that I meet on the street. This strategy I first saw in 1994 on the night of April 7, Thursday, when the Intrahamwe came to the gate of our home in Kachiru. You see, this strategy, I saw it demonstrated to save lives, but that night to save the lives of our family. You see, all day long we had heard gunfire and shouts and the bashing of metal doors as our neighbors with Tutsi ID cards were being hunted and killed all around us. As we put our three young children to bed in the hallway, effectively putting as many brick walls between them and the bullets that were flying outside, we had no idea what was happening. Until the next morning, we found out how our neighbor ladies had learned that there was a gang gathering at our gate and they courageously stepped up. You see, there were wild rumors. Some said the Belgians had shot the plane down and I don't know if our family was being confused with Belgians. I really don't know what was in the minds of these men who were set on murdering our family. At least that's what the neighbor lady said they were going to do to our children, to my wife, to myself. And to stand here today with those of you who did lose your children, your wives. It is an honor to be with you. I'm so proud every time I come back to Rwanda. <laughs> These neighbor ladies stepped up. They stepped between this gang and our gate and at great risk to themselves, they started telling the would-be killers stories. Stories of our family doing small acts of kindness over the four years that we had lived there. Stories of help with a funeral. Stories of taking a pregnant lady to, to the hospital in the middle of the night. Stories of our kids playing with their kids. Our little red-headed boy dodging in and out of the homes with his playmates as they were playing games together. In effect, these ladies were reframing our family on that dark, violent night. Before Teresa and I ever made the decision that I would stay and she would take the kids to safety, our courageous neighbor ladies were valiantly putting their lives on the line, telling stories and reframing our family in the eyes of the Intrahamwe. You see, this strategy of reframing means the world to me. It's the most powerful tool I know to build unity and reconciliation. This is the power of the Tiege camps, where men and women in their dark blue uniforms are reinventing themselves. They've been doing it for years. This is the power of confession and learning more about the final moments of your loved ones at Gachacha. This is the strategy behind working side by side, survivors and perpetrators together building homes in reconciliation villages. Shared experiences, whether in Tiege, Gachacha, or rebuilding projects, shared experiences are the key in reframing that leads to unity and reconciliation, to seeing the other differently. This is the power of reframing to bring healing in my life. While my struggle I would never compare to many of you here, I did struggle. And finally, I went for professional counseling to talk about the grief and the sorrow and the horror. And I learned to journal, and I'm a big fan of journaling now. And my wife courageously listened patiently to the tears and to the anger. But reframing has been the center of this journey for me. You see, some people think reframing and, and re unity and reconciliation is between people or between organizations, but often we need 
unity and reconciliation in ourselves. Every day I'm conflicted. Usually it's a conflict between myself and service. A conflict between a duty or an opportunity. Reframing is a strategy that is often blocked by my pride, by my arrogance, by the, the selfish neural pathways that I've been firing for years. And the more I fire them, the quicker and with greater intensity they fire the next time. You see, this strategy is a skill. Just like basketball, football, or playing the piano, I have to practice it again and again. Some days I do better than other days. But let me tell you, finding the good is the power behind reframing. Finding the good is the nitro fuel propelling reframing into the habit world of my brain. Reframing shifts the meaning of behavior. It means that behavior can be positive to some, negative to others. It can be different. The choice is ours. I heard Bishop John, you talked about choice today. The choice, how I choose to frame it. How I frame something can greatly limit the way I move forward or it can open up enormous opportunities. It's my choice of how I frame it. Through stories, our neighbor ladies took our family out of the pigeonhole, the category of the enemy, and these ladies deftly launched us into a whole new area of humanity in the Interahamwe brain. Now, I don't think I've ever put those two words together before, humanity and Interahamwe brain. But for me, that's reframing looking for the good. You see, these resourceful neighbor ladies, they pulled out of their toolbox the old tool of telling stories. It had served them well for so many years, it had brought healthy and peaceful conclusions. So for those who survived, great tragedy, unity and reconciliation is the life-giving breath that restores the heart and the intellect. Finding the good is one of the key habits behind reframing that makes unity and reconciliation a real journey in my life. And I believe in the lives of so many courageous Rwandan men, women, and children, and even people around the world who have also suffered great tragedy. Your courage, your tireless efforts at breaking free from anger and resentment is inspiring and changing the world. And I know that for a fact because you are changing my life every time I come here. It is such an honor every year to bring people to Rwanda. I am so proud of the journey that is taking place here. And I can't thank you enough for inviting me today. I wish you the richest blessings. Thank you. That's so moving. Nyakuba wa President wa Republika tujeze mu mwanya nyuma y'ibi byose twabamurikiye